kindergartners, this is called Ralph Tells a Story. Now, you might have already heard this book in class, but I want to read it to you again on story time so that anytime you're thinking, hmm, I feel stuck in writer's workshop, or I don't have an idea, I don't have any stories, you can think about this. You can read it as many times as you want, and I think it's going to make you laugh. And I think it's going to give you some great ideas about how to tell a story. Ralph tells a story. Look at this speech bubble. Before we even start reading, I want to show you the end pages. So the end pages in a book are when you open up a book. Before you even turn the first page, there's usually some artwork here. And look, it's a lot of blank paper. Isn't that funny? And pencils, it just says name, Ralph. It looks to me like Ralph has a lot of paper, but he doesn't have any story ideas. Oh no, poor Ralph. Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. Let's find out what Ralph does. Oh, sorry. This is called the book jacket, just like your jacket that you wear when it's chilly, and sometimes it slips off. Ralph Tells a Story by Abby Hanlon. I'm just going to take it off of this story and put it back on later. It protects the book, just like a jacket keep, protects you from being cold. Ralph Tells a Story by Abby Hanlon. <laughs> this is the dedication page for Lulu, Burke, and Nikki. Look at all those pictures. My teacher always said, stories are everywhere. She looks a little bit like me. What's up with that? And the kids in my class were always finding them. Yay, stories, stories. Then my mom ran so fast that she caught up with the ice cream truck. After that, I decided to hide my Halloween candy in my bed. I ran down the hallway with underwear on my head. The dentist forgot to give me a toothbrush. Now these sound like a stories that have already captured my attention. I want to know more. Like, why is this guy hiding his Halloween candy in his bed? And why did she run down the hall with underwear on her head? And I wonder if the mom caught the ice cream truck after all that running. And what happened if the dentist that he forgot, he or she forgot to give this kiddo a toothbrush? But at writing time every day, I could not write a story. I thought really hard. I stared at my paper. I stared at the ceiling. Do you think those are ways for writers to get ideas? Sometimes you need thinking time. Ah, I have no story. So kindergartners, I want to pause for a second. I know that we're not in school right now, and this isn't what it looks like when you're writing, but this is just what it looks like in room four when kids are writing when we are together. So you have to imagine how Ralph feels. Everybody else is writing, 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 talking, writing, 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 talking, helping. And there's Ralph with no story. How do you think he might feel? Then my grandma gave me a cup of coffee and said, shh, don't tell your mother. <laughs> that sounds like a story. So I looked for other things to do. I went to the water fountain. I roamed the hallways. Can I go to the bathroom again? I tried everything. Can I go help the lunch ladies? What? Then one day, after getting sent back to my desk, I begged Daisy for help. That's a good strategy. Ask somebody to help you. I can't write a story because nothing happens to me. Are you kidding? She said, I've written tons of stories about you. Stories happen to those who tell them. That's what the teacher's hanging up the sign. Stories happen to those who tell them. 
She began pulling stories out of her desk. Look at this one, she said. Remember the time you let me brush your hair? Ralph has messy hair. That's Stacy's story. And this one. Do you remember the time you knocked down all the crayons? It was so quiet during writing time. Then, crash! There's Ralph dropping all the crayons. Yikes! Oh, and remember the time you painted your nails with a black marker? Daisy. Then the teacher said, no, it's permanent marker. Oh my gosh, I think you used a Sharpie. I thought, I'll never be a great writer like Daisy. Then Daisy stapled all her stories together. Click, click. Wow, she said. This book already has 13 pages. Click, click. True Stories by Daisy. Can I use the stapler, I asked. I was really good at stapling. But you have nothing to staple, said Daisy. You have to write a story first. Just look around. Now, I see a little problem here. Daisy looks so enthusiastic and so confident. She has so many stories to write. But look at Ralph. I think Ralph doesn't believe that he can do it. Oh boy, Ralph needs some encouragement. Ralph needs to figure out how to get an idea and how to write. So I looked out the window for stories. So I looked for stories out the window in the aquarium in my desk. Why do you have socks in your desk? Hmm, I'm gonna stop right there. I think socks in your desk would be such a good story. I have so many questions. How did those socks get there? Why are they in his desk? Does he know they're in his desk? Is it a trick? I don't know. I really want to know more about those socks in his desk. Blech. And then when my teacher wasn't looking, I looked for stories on the floor. But still no stories. This is my favorite part. Look, my next book, The Sock Mystery. Oh, look, Daisy's writing about his socks in his desk. She called it The Sock Mystery. This one's writing. This one, Sam's the Sam. What does it say down there? It snowed and snowed. But still no stories. Poor Ralph. Lying under my desk reminded me of lying in the grass at the park. I closed my eyes and imagined I was at the park. <gasps> Wait a minute. This is that part of what writers do. They think and they picture. Ralph is picturing being at the park. Picturing can be like a movie playing in your head. Let's see what happens. Just like that time, a little inchworm crawled on my knee. The sun was shining right into my eyes, squinting. I picked up the wiggly inchworm, and I looked at it close up. And that's when my teacher found me. What's your story about? She asked. I opened my eyes. Um, uh, I saw an inchworm. Oh, wonderful, she said. I can't wait to read what you wrote. There was no inchworm story. Ralph hadn't written anything. It was just in his head. Okay, but this is a start because he's got a he's got a idea. The inchworm. He's using his imagination, his brain, to take a picture. Now, what does he need to do? He kind of has two choices. He can start to draw. But you know what? Writers don't always like to start with drawing. Some writers just like to go right to the writing. There was no inchworm story. I sat down and tried to write about the inchworm, but right away I got stuck. Do you know any inchworm stories? I asked Daisy. She just rolled her eyes and kept writing. Let's look at what he's got. So first Ralph drew a little inchworm, and then he wrote the word worm. Worm. He wrote the sounds that he knew, and then he made himself Ralph. And then he turned his paper over. 
do you know what, Ralph? This is a story. This is how it begins, right there. All right. Then my teacher said, writers, come to the rug. Time to share. Look, Daisy's running because she has a story called True Stories by Daisy. Uh-oh. Ralph doesn't look very excited about coming to the rug and sharing. I think he's going to have to share. Ralph, why don't you go first, the teacher said. I pretended I lost my paper. Oh, oh, pick me, pick me. Please, please, me. There's Ralph. It didn't work. He's sitting on it. I walked to the rug, to the front of the rug. It took a long time. I held my paper against my chest so no one could see it. Uh, I was at the park, I said, and an inchworm crawled on my knee. Now, wait a minute. I don't think that's what's written on Ralph's paper. But you know what? That's okay, because that's the story in his mind. He does have worm and Ralph, and he is at the park. So, not all the things that he's thinking are on his paper. That's okay. He still has the story. Let's see what happens. It was quiet. My heart went thump, thump, thump. Then I looked at Daisy. Really? Wow. Did it feel squishy, Ralphie? Did you take it home? Daisy's asking him a lot of questions. I think questions can be really helpful. And then everybody started asking questions. Did your mom let you keep it? Did you touch it? Was it a baby? Was it a girl? Did it tickle? Did you name it? I think if Ralph just chooses one of those questions, he's going to have more to write about. Like, did your mom let you keep it? I think that could be a story right there. Mom, can I keep this worm? No, you can't keep a worm. What's it going to eat? Right? That could become a story. Wait a minute. I thought something did happen with that inchworm. Well, I picked up the inchworm and decided to name him Nick. Oh, he's answering a question that somebody asked him. Did you name it? Yes, he did. He named it Nick. I built Nick a house, but he just inched away. So I followed him, which is why I didn't notice that someone was following me. And then all of a sudden, this wobbly, crazy baby dropped, grabbed Nick and put him in his, wait for it, diaper. Uh-oh. Put the worm in his diaper. No! I tried to be calm. Come on, baby, I said really nicely. Give Ralphie the inchworm. It didn't work. Was this the end of Nick? I think Ralphie's got a story. I really want to know what happened to that worm. But then I noticed Nick was escaping. Whew. He crawled right up that baby's stomach. Quickly, I rescued Nick and ran. And we spent the rest of the afternoon doing nothing together. The end. Everybody clapped and cheered. Show us the picture, Ralph, someone said. Wonderful, hooray, yay, Ralph. I wasn't embarrassed anymore, so I did. Ralph, worm, me, I was at Park. So do you see how he did some writing, he did some spelling, he did some drawing, and he had even more of a story in his brain. That can happen. That's great. The more he writes, the more words he's going to figure out how to get on the page. But for now, great start, Ralph. Let's give Ralph a big wave, silent cheer. Yay, Ralph. I know. It's so cool when writers write. That was last year. This year, I write stories all the time. I keep finding stories everywhere. Hmm, this book might be too thick to staple. 100 Funny Stories by Ralph. Okay, you ready? Writing. 
sorry, <laughs> writing tips from Ralph. Number one, get comfortable. Number two, it's okay to ask for help. Once upon a time, I, what was that funny thing I did again? He's asking somebody. You can do that. Three, you can always write about what you had for breakfast. Yum. Pizza in the morning by Ralph. Number four, eat lots of chocolate. <clears throat> I don't know if that helps writers, but maybe. I'm not going to argue with it. And then that's the end. But look at the end pages. Books by Ralph. When I Ate Too Much Spaghetti by Ralph. The Shampoo Mystery by Ralph. The Marker That Never Ran Out by Ralph. The Crazy Supermarket Cart. When My Mom Bought Me the Wrong Size Underwear. The Lunch Lady's Friend. When My Backpack Was Really Heavy. All of these stories are by Ralph. The Case of the Missing Ice Cubes. The Worst Stapler Ever. When My Baby Brother Ate Hot Sauce. Ooh, ooh. The Scariest Hamster. When Milk Came Out of My Nose by Ralph. Daisy's Embarrassing Birthday Party. When the Librarian Yelled Really Loud at Me. The Smelly Band-Aid by Ralph. When the principal tripped, oh no, my bathroom emergency, the inchworm returns by Ralph. Okay, I bet maybe you have a story. And you can think, it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be something that happened this morning or last night or yesterday or when you were a baby. Go for it. Go right.